When the war in Israel began last October, watchmen were giddy with excitement. Tom Cody told us he was absolutely sure this war would bring the rapture. Brother Chuch went live the day after it started to push the same prediction. Lee Brainerd and Ken Johnson used creative exegesis to find Hamas in the Bible. And who can forget the sight of Mary Ann Hall positively glowing on October 11th? Not to be outdone, Ross of New News was also on the case, telling us as a matter of fact that we just witnessed Psalm 83. He emphatically told us this Gaza war appeared in Scripture and he knew how it would end. Meanwhile, there were some of us out here who were exercising caution. For example, may I humbly point out that yours truly covered the war in a careful, sober analysis, which rapturists did not appreciate at the time. It was heresy to suggest the war may be part of a complicated long march that could last for years. For months on end, Ross produced a slew of meaningless content on the war. He was convinced that this war would compel a major treaty that would lead to the Antichrist. Here he is in January, spiking the football that a possible ceasefire with Hamas fulfills a prediction in 1 Thessalonians. But then as peace talks failed and the conflict escalated, Suddenly, that was out the window, and the sudden destruction of a nuclear attack will fulfill 1 Thessalonians. Oh, no way, there's more negotiation, we're back to peace and safety. Oh, never mind, I was just kidding, it's the sudden destruction of an exceeding great army. The nonsense finally got so ridiculous that not even Ross could defend it. Israel apparently has the means to win the war. So a ceasefire isn't happening, and nobody wants to see nukes fly. Reality set in for Ross that this war may very well be just another milestone, which prompted him to record this on August 22nd. A frustrated Ross admits to his audience that he just wasted 10 months completely guessing wrong and is now at a loss as to the point of this war. To give himself a big dose of cope, he says his failure is understandable since everybody else had the same conclusion. I want to say this because I want to bring it up. Um, I, I think in so many different ways I was wrong, but it's still no one really saw it. And that was is that, you know, we figured, I figured, and, and I taught this, I, I, I believed it in my own self, that if Israel was surrounded by its enemies at a given time, as they gathered together against Israel, that the rapture would happen. None of us really saw coming the war with Gaza, the war with Hezbollah, the war in West Bank. That's what it's coming down to. I, I didn't see that. So there's this thing in there to where we thought everything was, should have happened sooner, but there's a reason why it didn't, and that's these wars. Uh, the thing that we saw and thought was coming would be the, the rapture or the sudden destruction, Paul, 1 Thessalonians 5.3. But it didn't happen. And I found that, I'm just finding that really curious. We didn't take into account, I didn't take into account that Israel's really going to have to use its military, but they are. You find that interesting? Well, Israel, for all practical purposes, is winning. It's a war. Okay, so I have three things to say about this. Number one, Ross forgot that Israel had an army. What? He was surprised by military action from Israel. Are you joking? How do you forget about the IDF? That is not something small to overlook. Ross was so committed to his ideology that he somehow convinced himself a sovereign nation with a big army would not deploy its army. This is what we mean when we say rapturists begin with an assumption of imminent rapture that they fit into the news. It makes absolutely no sense at all to somehow forget that Israel had an army. Building on that to my point number two, it is dishonest for Ross to claim the rest of us also forgot that. 
No, Ross, it isn't true that everybody missed it. Everybody in your Watchmen bubble may have missed it, but not everybody in the world. Not that we expect an apology for this, though. In fact, we don't even expect Ross to learn from this. Which brings me to my number three. The fact that Ross's little mea culpa here doesn't mean much because he will continue giving bad analysis with a rapture bias. We know this from his history. It was just a year ago when the war began that Ross's whole schema at that time was disrupted and he had to rebrand himself. Ross admitted in that video he scrubbed his old content because it all turned out to be wrong in light of new political developments. This is what Ross does. He puts out bad videos full of wrong analysis. He embarrasses himself with increasingly contradictory propositions. He paints himself into a corner and then scrubs his channel to get out of it. He's done this before and he'll do it again, which is why today's Mia culpa is nothing but a joke. And Ross can get away with it because the airheads in his audience do not care. Ross could literally go on camera with a monkey on his head reading from the funny pages, and the people in his audience would listen to him anyway. It isn't about correct Bible knowledge or accurate analysis or responsible teaching. No, it is about rapturism. So even when Ross puts out a video admitting he's been totally wrong for 10 months, they do not even care. And still these people wonder why the rest of us think they are crazy.